it can consume you. I also didn't want to work for anybody. Mm. So I joined Uber. I didn't think I was going to make money. You need to have an understanding, babe. I've missed most of my friends' weddings. If you do what you love, you never work a day. That's, yeah. That stuff is a lie. I gradually became like a voice for black people. You are live on Hoxton Radio with your girl Mimi. Guys, I have an exclusive interview. It's happening now with Taya Aina. Taya Aina, say hi. Say hi to everyone on Hoxton Radio. Hi, what's up? What's up? How are you doing? <laughs> so, guys, if you do not know who he is, you're about to find out in this interview, but he's one of Africa's most prominent travel creators and he's been on YouTube since 2017, right? Yeah. And a lot of his content is to do with travel, does a bit of lifestyle as well. But I wanted to ask you, what made you get into travel content in the first place? So what made you wake up and be like, you know what, I'm going to start a YouTube page and I'm going to start doing whatever I was doing, but what led you to travel content to begin with? Hmm. So there's a lot, you want a long story or the short story? We can do long story. <laughs> we have some time tonight, guys. <laughs> so um, I think, let me just give you the abridged version. Um, so I finished, I graduated from uni and I'm the kind of person who is, I'm always very proactive. So I, did, I also didn't want to work for anybody. Mm. So I joined Uber. So I became okay, like an Uber cool. driver. Okay, nice. After I graduated, and I drove for Uber for like seven, eight months mm -hmm. in Lagos, Nigeria. And then during that process, I, I, that made me go around Lagos mm -hmm. a lot. And I started to, you know, when you drive around Lagos, you get to know about mm -hmm. Lagos. And then I started to take pictures with my phone. And from there, I used to pick people and drop them off at different mm -hmm. places in Lagos and places I never knew about. And from there, I was like, oh, okay, nobody's documenting these places. So eventually, when I quit Uber, I now started to go back to those places and make videos. I actually was going to those places when I was in Uber, but I okay. didn't have enough time because I had to pick mm, people up. Yeah, of course. Then eventually, I quit Uber, and then I started to pick people, drop people off. Uh, no, I started to go back to those places, I mean, and I started to make videos about them. So videos like um, best restaurants in Lagos, best um, best hotels in Lagos. I used to make all those videos back then. And I started to realize that, okay, I actually love, um, you know, going to all these places and exploring and documenting them. And from there, I started making videos about more places in Lagos. And then from there, places in Nigeria. And then it just expanded to Africa and then now the world. Okay, cool. That is really inspiring. And for anyone who's not familiar, you have almost a million subscribers on YouTube, which is amazing. Do you have any tips for people who are trying to get into YouTube um, creation or any like content creation and what do you think is helpful to try and build your brand but also get those subscribers up? Like what would be your like top three tips for those people? I think the first time was the one I always tell people is like fall in love with making videos. Because mm. when you fall in love with making videos, every other thing becomes easy. It's like a basketballer. It's like if you love playing basketball, nobody's going to tell you that, oh, you need to go to the court. You need to wake up early. You just wake up because you love doing it. Yeah. Or, you know, those children when they were younger and they used to go and play football, they sneak out to play football and their mom maybe beats them or something. It's like, <laughs> don't play football, but they still go out again yeah, and they still yeah. do it. So that's the first one, fall in love. Then secondly is to figure out what your niche is. Um, it's much easier to grow on YouTube if you have like a direction. So if you know you want to go into travel, you know, just focus on making travel content. If you know you want to go into like food, fashion, whatever it is, mm. focus on that because you grow faster when you do that as opposed to today you make travel videos, tomorrow you make this, tomorrow you make that. And then I think the third one is just like, you know, like be patient. Uh, be patient and be, cons be consistent too because um, YouTube is a long journey. Like mm. I've been on YouTube since 2017. I started YouTube 2017, but I actually really started in 2019. Okay. August 2019. So why why did you really start then as opposed to 2017? Okay, because when I started 2017, I wasn't on YouTube like that. I just used to... I didn't think I was going to make money from it. I didn't yeah, think it was going to... Yeah. It didn't look... I had like... We were like 90 subscribers or something like that. And my videos were getting like, were like 20, 30 views. Mm. But then I used YouTube. I started to watch a lot of YouTube, learned how to make videos, started making videos mm. for people. So I used to shoot weddings, shoot all oh, of that. Wow. that. That was how I kind of like learned how to handle the camera and film. And I did that for like two years. But it got to a point where I started to get tired of filming for people because you film mm. for people. They were like, yeah. oh, I don't like this song. Oh, do this like this. I'm like, hmm. 
I don't like that. <laughs> I want to do my own stuff. Yeah. So I said I was going to focus on YouTube, August 2019, and that was when I started posting consistently, and that was when I started seeing growth on my on my channel. So. Okay, cool. That's really good to know. And out of all the places that you've traveled to, what would you say is your like best or like favorite country you've been to thus far? Hmm. People ask me this question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> It's it's difficult sometimes to answer because every place has something that is unique. So I can give you like top three. Okay, top three is fine. Top three. Top three and why? Top three and why? Cape Town one. Okay. I love Cape Town, South Africa, because it's just just amazing. Like the beach, the mountains, you know, the people, the vibe. There's just chilled vibes. Yeah, yeah. Um, another one too is um, Lisbon, Portugal, oh. which is where I currently live at the moment. And it's just, it's also a chill vibe. I think in terms of like Eastern Europe, uh, I think Portugal is one of my favorite countries. Once I went, once I traveled to it for the first time, I fell in love with it. It's just the weather is nice, better than London's weather. Oh, <laughs> no shade to London, of course. <laughs> no shade to London. And then I think the third one is actually New York. Okay. Oh, okay. New York is crazy, but I think i love it because i i don't know as somebody who who grew up in lagos it just reminds me of lagos yeah it makes sense very busy like, city very yeah. busy city so those are my like top three that okay, i can point okay, to nice and in terms of content creation and travel um i feel like if you go to somewhere if you're around people they'll be like oh he has his camera out again he's filming content has that affected like your personal relationship whether that's dating or just general friendships like how has that been trying to essentially be a content creator who you know makes travel content but also try and like have a life outside of that like what's that been like hmm. it's a lot i think in terms of like relationships with people or if you have a relationship one of the things if you're a travel creator you need to have an understanding babe <laughs> <laughs> you need to have an understanding yeah. girlfriend because like if you're traveling a lot that means you're not always going to be around. Mm. So you need to have somebody who is understanding, who understands what you're doing and where you're going to so that they don't just, you know, like, feel like, okay, um, you know, they have to understand the sacrifices you're making. and But you also have to figure out the way to also, even when you're not around, to still be present. So, like, phone calls and video calls and all of that. But in terms of, like, um, relationships with, like, friends and family, it's it has its negative sides because... Mm. I would say I've missed most of my friends' weddings. Like, they are big events because I'm never around. So it's mm. like, maybe someone is getting married next week, but I'm maybe in somewhere in the Caribbean filming oh, videos. Okay. So I can't leave what I'm mm. doing and come all the way back to Nigeria yeah. or whatever. So that happens. And then you miss out on a lot of those memories that you're meant to create with people because you're out walking. Mm. Um, so it affects that way. But yeah it's just what it is <laughs> yeah fair enough but like even following up from that like my next question would be you've kind of touched on it just now actually to be fair but are there any other instances where you feel like vlogging does take a personal toll on your like personal life are there any other examples you could give us or tell us and how do you manage that and just yeah. overcome it in fact yeah um i think one of the one of the major problems i face which is like i still face it up to now is because i i grew up like from a lower income type background so i never experienced travel my first trip out of nigeria was 2018 that's first time wow. i ever left the country uh so i started traveling through content so now and i've traveled to like over almost 40 countries now but it was mostly content based so my idea of travel has been has just been like youtube content yeah so it's like walk so the way you probably say like, oh, you know, you want to go to Cancun or somewhere for a vacation. I'm not thinking about Cancun like <laughs> You're that. You're thinking, thinking about content. What am I going to make there? <laughs> <laughs> so that becomes a problem because sometimes, you know, people say people say something about, um, oh, fall in love. You see, if you do what you love, you never walk a day. That, yeah. That stuff is a lie. Okay, interesting it, it perspective. Because once you start to do what you love and you turn it into work, sometimes it can actually become work. And then you okay. start to lose the joy for it. So that has been something I've been trying to balance. So what I'm trying to do now is like I'm I, I I now set out time within the year where it's like, okay, this month I'm gonna travel, I'm not gonna take my camera, I'm not gonna take anything. Okay, that's good. And then I'll just go and enjoy it. And I've done that once. I've been successful once. Okay, and how was that experience? <laughs> Did you actually stick to it? Uh, I filmed on my phone. <laughs> Okay, so you compromise. I'm not going to film my camera, but I'm going to film my phone. Talking of filming, for anyone who's a budding, you know, content creator would like to start a YouTube channel, what camera do you use? 
Um, at the moment, I use um, a Sony A7 IV. But the truth is that okay. even up to now, I still film on my phone sometimes because mm. it just depends. The best camera you have is the one in your pocket. Anyone True. that is available to you at any point in time. So, for example, if I was going into like an airport or something, I won't pick out my big camera. Or if I'm going yeah. into a place where I know that there are going to be somehow about cameras, I'll just use my phone. If I'm in a place where I can easily film, I use my camera. And the camera, it's not really about the camera. It's about the story you're trying to tell. So yeah, that's true. I can literally use a camera and film a video and get one million views. I've done it before. And I can film with my big camera and the video might not do well. So it's not really about the camera. It's just about the story. So anybody who is who wants to go into content creation, don't get too focused on the gear. Your phone is, if you use an iPhone, you're fine. Okay, guys. Film I hope you're listening, guys. Whatever camera you have, including your iPhone, is great for footage. Well, you are in London right now, and I wanted to ask you what your favorite thing about London is and what your what your least favorite thing about London is, if you had to choose one for both. Which one do you want? Which one do you want me to start with first? We'll start with your least. Let's start with <laughs> the bad, and then we'll go with the good. <sighs> which one should I pick? Because there are so many. Oh one... no, no, there can't be that many. <laughs> Come on. One, London is unnecessarily expensive. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that one. And then I think secondly is um, everywhere is so far from each other. Like You think? Yeah. I, it's, I took two hours to get here. But and you, then I okay, to be fair, where you were, so for context, you were in South London to yeah. get to East is a bit, uh, South London transport like is a bit hour. awkward. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's like, it's like just the commute is like long okay. sometimes across. But I feel like with the, because we have good underground and train systems, I feel like it helps make it, things a bit easier it, to travel around London. It does help, it does help, so, so okay. yeah, that's, that's fine. But I think in terms of what I like, I also like a lot of things. Too. Okay, okay, go on. So, okay, so you can you can name more than one for like. We can you can okay. name you can name three. Why not? Okay. Oh, the last one I wanted to say about okay. that I didn't like was the weather. I mean, do you know what? Yeah, everyone says that, and yeah. I can't argue with that. I can't yeah. be like, oh no, the weather's great. No, it's bad. Yeah. The weather so, is bad. I hear it. So what I like is that it's uh, very multicultural. You can get to try out almost any food. You can get to meet you know meet different types of people across the world. Um, I also like it because it's also sent, London is like in terms of location based on the world and it's central. So from here to like you can get almost anywhere in the world from here. It's a hub. It's true. Um, it also has a lot of um, Africans too. Like the, and they also speak English. Because and why I say this is because when you go to some European countries, you don't get to see a lot of like black people in some of them yeah and they don't speak the same language so even in portugal lisbon where i live is like everybody speaks even the black people speak portuguese so that is also like cool too and yeah it's cool i also know a lot of people here too so it's cool yeah london i agree london is a hub and it is quite easy to get to places especially within europe it's like you know quite you know france is like literally a euro star like two hours away so that's great yeah. um another question in terms of content creation do you edit your own videos or do you have a team at this point in your career when i started out um that was like 2019 to like 2017 ish to like 2020 after the pandemic so i was editing all my videos myself but now i have a team I have, um, I have a team for like everything now so i just mostly shoot and then i send everything okay, to them okay cool I think yeah that's cool it's really good to so, know because because okay. the honest truth is that it takes so much time to do all those things i can imagine yeah <laughs> and you if you want to really grow especially when you're like at this stage you need to keep shooting and keep making more content so you need to just film give it to them they edit it and then it saves time basically okay cool another question is what would what is your favorite thing about content creation and your least favorite thing about content? if you could choose one for both hmm. especially now that you're at, at this stage where you do have you know a, a huge following you're quite a household name, especially in Africa. So what would you say, like, if they have even changed from when you started making content to now? Um, so, you know, you said something now, like, household name in Africa. Uh-huh. But you know, the funny thing is, my biggest audience is actually in the US. Okay. And then next one is Nigeria, and then UK is the next Okay. One. Yeah. Well, shout out UK, UK <laughs> fans. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Shout out to you guys being top three. So um, I think my biggest um, thing I love about it is that it has like one exposed me to the world. Um, it has opened so many doors for me, allowed me to meet so many people. It has allowed me to basically live like what people will call a dream life, literally. So that's it. And then this, what I don't like about it is that it can, if you're not careful, it can consume you mm. because it's like 
every single moment waking hour like sometimes i sleep i'm dreaming about content <laughs> I'm, i wake up yeah. the first thing i wake up is like oh video ideas or you post a video you're like oh the video doesn't do well then you just feel bad throughout that mm. whole day or like it how well your content does now becomes the the metric which you used to measure your happiness yeah so you can get the, and it does for you yeah lot i feel like that's a lot of people yeah especially yeah. on like tiktok creation like i hear that a lot as well yeah. like people are like if you don't get certain numbers it's like oh yeah, my god the like, video is really bad exactly. you know, yeah so so that's what i don't like about it okay okay cool i mean yeah. that those are i think very fa- valid and and fair reasons to be honest um another question i have for you is as you've been traveling, you've done a lot of collaborations with, you know, CNN, Jackie Aina, Adekunle Gold, Davido. What has it been like working on those collaborations in terms of your career? Like, you know, when you reach that point where you're like, oh my gosh, I've made it. Or like, you know, what was your viewpoint when you were working with those people and working on those amazing, exciting projects? Hmm. So that reaching that point where I've made it, I don't think I've reached that point okay like i don't think there's ever any yeah. i've made it because there's always something else i agree there's always something else. Like, okay, okay no i've done this i can, I can I do more do <laughs> i can do something else yeah, yeah i hear it i hear it but boy it, it's you know it's very like i i think sometimes because youtube is more of a thing where you kind of like do it alone and why i say you do it alone is mm. like in this place where we are you can literally set up a camera and start making videos and become popular and people yeah, are of course yeah. well, we know you but you you know you're mainly interfacing with your camera so you don't really know the impact of what you're doing but when you go outside and then people see you or maybe when you know like when i first met the video and it was like oh you know i watch your channel like ah like i was like ah it was it was crazy because yeah, like yeah. oh this guy's like this big superstar and it's like oh i watch your channel and he was telling about the video i went to namibia i'm like oh okay it's not it's not just saying it. yeah he actually, he actually watched genuinely watches your channel you must have been like, oh, I'm okay. like oh, okay i'm like oh okay that felt good and then also, like, you know, when you just being able to access and meet all these people, it just shows you yeah. that, you know, like what you're doing is, you know, has a lot of value. Because if you didn't have a lot of value, like, you know, all these doors wouldn't be opening. And it, it also shows that it's having an impact. So it just gives you that kind of like ginger and motivation to keep pushing and to keep doing more. So, yeah, literally. Okay, cool. And one, well, second to last final question is you are currently working on a documentary um, to celebrate Black History Month. Can you tell us more about that and why you decided to undertake making this documentary and why it's important to you? Um, so, I think the story of, like, emigration is important. I love history. And um, when I look at it is my mission. And when I started YouTube, my mission has changed multiple times. But what I realized was that I gradually became like a voice for black people and mm-hmm. for Africans, like all across the world. Because one, first of all, from Africa, I was one of the first people to start, you know, showcasing Nigeria. First of all, in I was actually the first person. <laughs> Whoop. Yeah. In Ni- subtle flex, subtle yeah, flex, guys. Showcasing Nigeria, showcasing the potential. Because when people talk about Nigeria, you know, it's like mostly the bad stuff. So I started to make those videos and then it, it changed that perception. People in the UK, people in the U- US now had things to show, um, you know, their friends like, oh, Nigeria is not so bad. And I think, yeah, I helped in doing that with my content. So I think now the story of emigration, because the, the title of the documentary is called Japa, and it tells the story of emigration of um, Africans um, who left Africa and came to the UK. Um, Africans emigrate to like three major countries, not three major countries actually, but like English speaking Africans emigrate to three major countries, which is um, the US, uh, Canada, and then the UK. So I felt like, okay, it was very important to tell the story of, you know, that that story and also just showcase the people who have done it, who have done it successfully, what were the trials and tribulations that they faced and just highlight that and be that voice for those people basically. So. It's coming out in the next few days and I'm sure it's going to be good. We're working on it at the moment. Okay, great. Well, that's exciting for us to know. And one last question for those who are, you know, been tuned into this interview and would like to, you know, watch your content and find you. Where can they find you? And also one last question, which I love to ask my guests is if you could describe how you're feeling now at the end of the interview in three words, what would those three words be? Okay, which one should I answer first? You can answer the first one first and okay. the second one last. <laughs> Um, the first one uh, is um, Tire I Know. You can find me anywhere across all platforms. Tire I Know, T A Y O A I N A Films. Tire I Know Films everywhere. And on YouTube, it's just Tire I Know. And then you said, How am I feeling? Yeah, in three words. At the moment? Yeah. 
I'm feeling chilled. Chilled. I'm hungry. Hungry. <laughs> it's, it's dinner time, <laughs> to be fair. And I think I'm just excited for, like, the future. And, you know, I'm excited for the interview. I'm excited for the for the documentary that's coming out soon. And I'm also excited to be in London, like London. You know, London. Oh, great. I mean, despite the weather, London is good vibes. Yeah. And I just want to thank you so much, Taya Enough, for your time. And guys, like you said, check him out at Taya Enough Films on YouTube and on social media platforms. So thank you so much for talking to us here at Oxen Radio and enjoy the rest of your time in London. And up next on the show, guys, I'm going to be playing some Money Long with Made For You followed up. By, actually, no, first I'm going to play some TLC Scrubs, one of my favorite songs, followed up by Made For You by Money Long. So enjoy, and thank you so much again, Tyana, for your time. Alter Daily, the alternative network.